<laughs> oh, this is the part that sucks. You need a hand? You good? Amazing place. Ooh, rock star. <laughs> and there's Ian. Hello friends and welcome to day two of the Death Valley Noob Rally. We are just outside the park, we just passed the sign, and I'm told today we're headed to the infamous Lippincott Pass. So, this was Ian's idea, so if I die, it's Ian's fault. Supposedly this pass is a pretty difficult 4x4 trail, so we'll see how hard it is on motorcycles and we're gonna hit the infamous racetrack playa today so that'll be cool to see lots of stuff to see out here in death valley and it's nice to be hanging out with experienced tour guides this job has really made it possible for me to go to a lot of cool places and i'm i'm very grateful and thankful for that that is a neutral bro we don't want that we don't want that now i don't want to speak too soon but a point i would like to make today for all of you haters or skeptics about less expensive bikes is this. Ian is on a brand new, top of the line Husqvarna 501. It is the best dual sport motorcycle that you can buy off the showroom floor today. Some of my beta friends might disagree. That's totally cool, but they're in the same class, basically. There are only a few bikes that would fit into that class, okay? He's in front of me. He's leading the ride. That bike is like $13,000 new, and he's added a bunch of stuff to it. I am on a 2021 Honda CRF 300L Rally with 6,000 miles. Uh, the rear spring has been upgraded to a cheapy YSS because I'm fat, uh, but that's it. Factory, everything else. Obviously, I've done hand guards and stuff, but like nothing other than the exhaust that would alter the performance of this motorcycle. And we're gonna go to all the same places today. Not gonna say that I'm gonna have an easier time or that I'm gonna have an equally easy time. That's not true. It's gonna be harder. But the point is, everyone that's like, you can't go anywhere on those bikes, that's wrong. You can go many of the same places. It's just easier, but you pay twice as much to have it be easier and, uh, you know, arguably more fun because it's faster and, you know, you're gonna be fighting the bike less and all that. Like, it's not, I'm not saying it's not better. I'm just, I had a guy in the comments the other day say like, I don't understand why anyone buys those 300 Ls. They're only for brand new riders. They're not though. That's not what, that's not the only thing they're for. In fact, many experienced riders have a great time on bikes like this. Just not as fast, but they go to the same places. So we'll see. I could end up dying today because I said that. Uh, this bike could explode. I don't know. All kinds of things could happen. I could have jinxed the hell out of myself, but that's a point I'd like to try to make today. So gear today, Shoei Hornet X2 helmet. I got these Racer Rally gloves. I love these gloves. I think the Racer gloves are the best gloves you've never heard of, and I really need to make a video about that. I'm wearing this Climb MSR base layer over or under my MSR. Uh, this is the, God, I keep forgetting the name of the vest. It's something super e easy too. I'll, I'll put it in the description. Uh, and then I've got my Climb, the Tactical Pro jersey, the one that's got a little abrasion resistance, but also breathes well. Over my Climb armored shirt, I'm wearing Climb Dakar in the boot pants. Uh, over a pair of Ar EVS articulating knee guards. And my Alpine Stars Tech 7 Enduros, as always. All of that will be linked in the description if you're curious. A good view over here to the right. I'll show it to you when we come around the corner. Because, uh, you know, I need to look at the road right now. That's a view, boys. Yeah, okay, we're not gonna... We're not gonna look at it too long. Just pretty washed out. I don't know if you heard, they had a hurricane down here. And everything is just kind of obliterated that they haven't had time to go in and maintain. The backside was all great as they fixed all this, but this side not so much. Because it's like you gotta go slow for the washouts, but fast for the sand. <laughs> You're usually not doing the right thing because you dealt, just dealt with the other one. So you just take your time, pick your lines, and live your life. Oh, oh. That's a good one. <sighs> I 
this side. I came right through there. <laughs> Slow, over there. You made it! Yeah, those are the hazards you find. So it's always nice to stop and let people know that shit sideways. Uh, or hopefully not. That's the kind of rut that got Mike on the Washington BDR. I always think about that when I see one of those. Got his bike sideways, or got his front wheel sideways, and he got trapped underneath, and that was it. Broken Lake City. We're hitting all these cool little water, cro water crossings as this road follows this stream down this canyon. Kind of neat. I got it on camera! <laughs> That's hilarious! <laughs> that the windshield? Uh, one of the nuts was loose? I don't think it likes the weight of that camera. Oh, I'm so glad I was filming. That's funny. It's sort of designed to do that, I guess. Well, it's a self-ejection mechanism. Yeah, yeah. Well, he goes flying through the dip, and it just I just see the windshield. I hear the suspension just go clang, <laughs> and then the windshield goes flying up. Well, that's a beautiful windshield. I hate to lose it. I just brand new. I just got this one. All these Hondas are falling apart. But the Hondas! It is, yeah. yeah. I had an XR once, right? The XR650R? Tell us about it. <laughs> you had an XR? Was it the R model? Is my KTM having any issues? No. Is it brand no. new? Hey, hey, is... hey easy, yeah, easy. <laughs> All right, trail side repair complete. Thanks to Barry, was quick with the, uh, with the Allen wrench. Yeah, did I give you a key tag? You just earned it. Did I give you one already? I just gave you a sticker like an asshole. There you go, you need that. Ah, well, that's one I haven't seen before. But, uh, it's actually designed to do that. That's why there are cutouts below where the bolts go. So, no harm, no foul. That is the Saline Valley. Ooh, what a view! It's amazing out here. Big shout out to Joel and uh, the ADV Rider Forum and all the volunteers. Joel's the guy that puts this whole thing together. And it's a big rally, 200 plus people. Logistical nightmare, I'm sure. And he does a great job. So thanks to Joel for putting this together for the opportunity. And thanks to Daryl from Cyclops for telling me about it. You know, the whole point was to come down and hang out with them, but they ended up not being able to make it. So I'm uh, living vicariously, or they're living vicariously through me. And I'm uh, living it up for them. You can't see it. But that is two F-117 stealth fighters. Just flew over us a couple hundred feet. And of course I didn't get my camera on. I've never seen one of those up close. We got distracted because there was an F-A-18 coming over here and right up the valley, two stealth fighters. You can still see them. That's, <laughs> dude, the riding is the second best part of this trip. Anyway, we're about to cross the saline. Lippincott Pass goes around and up this mountain. If this is my last will and testament, just put screw Big Rock Moto on my tombstone. <laughs> Everyone, if he kills me, unsubscribe from him. <laughs> right? I could drive my Civic up that. Yeah, yeah, well, people probably do. I don't know how far they get. I'm going to follow the Africa Twin, because if he can do it, well, I have no excuse. So I went on to Onyx comments on this trail and they said that the washouts in the valley were actually the worst part so let's see how they are and you know like i said in the video i'm not an iphone guy oh sh oh he saved it oh this is the part that sucks if you are in a four-wheel drive rig yeah no clearance would be bad here oh yeah that was mildly vertical interesting Oh, it's amazing what these bikes can do. You look at that and you think, there's no way yeah, I can ride up that on a motorcycle. And it's just like, bloop, there it is, you're done. You just did it. The line I want is over here, but I don't think I can get there. Whew, that was close, that was close. <sighs> I almost ate it. I saw you. I got on camera, though. Good. That was an amazing save. It was real good. We're going to keep going? Let's ask these guys what it looks like. Well, we just met a group going the other way, and they said, well, one, they didn't say it's easy, so look forward to that, but they said it's, it is doable. Oh, another wicked wash. Holy sh**. What the f is this? Oh, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. 
That one sucked. That one sucked. It was steep. Out of the sand, into the steep. Not good. You got this, Sal. You got this, Sal. Tractor that shit. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Are you down, buddy? What's he doing there? Looks like he might be. You need a hand? You good? Well, I don't like this either. I do not want to come back through these. Sucks ass. Looks like the move is here to there, I think. Oh, he's got it. Damn it, Barry. I was gonna help you. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, no bad. Not bad, not bad. The rock right there is not helping. So that's supposed to be the worst part. According to the 4x4 guys. Of course, I'm not through the valley yet, but... We'll see. Yeah, I love it when it's all the things. Like, you practice one, you're like, okay, I feel pretty good in sand, and I feel pretty good in rocks. But then you get them at the same time, and you're like, what the hell? This isn't fair at all. Big sand wash. Well, I'm gonna get some real riding in today, huh, boys? <sighs> Nailed it. Rockstar. You're a rockstar. I made a pact to get in better shape in the off season, and I have been exercising, not a lot, but like going for walks every day. So cardiovascularly, I'm a little bit better, but I think what I needed to motivate me was to come out here and get my ass kicked which is already happening and we haven't even done anything super hard, so... There's two months to go until I go back to Canada for Grizzbait 2.0. And I'd like to not die, so... I need to get home and get serious about... dropping a few pounds and also just training on the bike. I'm just, like I said, not in riding shape because I haven't been riding... much in the winter and when I did, you know, short, short... two, three hour rides... None of this all day, multiple days, you know, you don't get that a lot in the winter. But this is Lippincott Pass. And it is helmet cam from here on out. Because I broke the B cam, sort of. I heard the switchbacks are pretty gnarly on this. This isn't one of them. I mean, it is a switchback, but it's not gnarly. Ooh, or I could just slide out, that's fun. Wow, yeah, we're going up fast, gorgeous. There's a switchback, yep. Not all the way though, that's only a 90. I'm looking for them 270s. I'll tell you what I am gonna do. I'm gonna pick my way and take my time and uh, just rest in the sections where I can. Just smart to save your energy and your hydration or something. Also, I'm lazy, but we don't, we don't need to talk about that. You know, it's interesting how pointless it is almost to ask people how hard something is because everyone's opinion of what's hard is so subjective. Like, What's a gnarly section? Although, I do know that they got through that last washout before they met us and said, didn't say anything about it, so I'm gonna guess those are pretty good riders. I don't like when pretty good riders say, oh, it's, it's kind of hard, but it'll be okay. I like when pretty good riders are like, ah, I didn't even, I was sleeping, it was so easy. You know, I, really my ultimate goal is not to ride the gnarliest, most exciting stuff. It's to get to the coolest looking places. And I think the side effect is that I have to know how to ride reasonably well to get there so I don't like it like I don't seek out difficult things to improve myself I probably should I mean I do a little but it's like the, the riding at, at Grisbay for instance I mean there was amazing places and you know it was hard to get up there but that's not the kind of riding that I that I want to do that I'm doing on purpose in my life uh, it's a side effect of my other goal but because things like that exist in between me and my goal it just behooves me to take my medicine and get better at this kind of riding, or at least improve my off-road riding skills. And if you're like me, I would say the same. And I also think, honestly, the best thing you can do, particularly when you're new, but really anytime, is get some training, some coaching, because you can accelerate your learning, stop from building bad habits, get out of third gear when you should be in second, and, uh, and really be safer and enjoy riding more and you won't you know you're less likely to end up in a place where it just sucks because you're in over your head all the time and you decide you don't even like it uh so training is good the sign that says entering death valley national monument cool well now we're here Whew. i would stop and take a picture here but i want to live so i'm not gonna 
so far all big bikeable. I mean, not the washouts. I wouldn't want to take my trans out through that, but some of the washouts have been filled in though. The advantage of trails that the 4x4 overlanders take a lot is they'll, they'll do work on them because they have to, right? And that just makes it easier for us. And also, don't let anyone tell you there's any shame in waddling. It is not the easiest or most efficient way to get up things, but sometimes you have to. It's not, I'm not doing it yet, but I, I reserve the right to. Wow. This is, like we're coming up quick, friends. It's no joke, man. Steep, loose, rocky. Well, I didn't know he was filming, I would have stood up. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah, nothing crazy there. That's too bad, right? No, I barely, I only stood up like three times. I didn't know you were filming me, I would have stood up instead of sitting down like a grandma, but. I want to stay behind you in case you drop that thing. I don't want you to have to pick it by yourself. And if you can get through, I can get through. There's one instinct I've gained recently, and that's not freaking out when the ass end starts to slide. Just keep the front pointed where you want to go. Give it gas till you find traction. Oh shit, he's stopping, he's stopping. I don't want to stop right here. I don't want to stop right here. Yeah, what well, sucks is the best line's always on the outside, but you don't want to go there. Apparently I do want to go there. God, I wish we hadn't stopped on this hill. Come on, baby. Let's get traction. I want some loose rocks. Okay, hold on. Ugh. There we go. There we go. Okay, you're gonna have to stand up. This is not easy. Especially on a big bike, man. Good for him. Impressed by that guy. These bikes take you amazing places. Amazing places. Amazing place. How sweet of you. When you get up on the pass. This is Lippincott Pass, and we had a great time coming up. Um, but the real fun was down on the bottom, the washouts in the valley. The pass itself has just been kind of loose. Rocky, Rocky, Dr. Scott, Brad. Nobody ever gets that joke. Nobody ever gets it. It's not even a joke, it's just a reference. Literally not one time. No, ter ser no tow service, high clearance. So it's easy now? That was the hard part? Because we're past that sign? Sure, that's what I'm gonna tell myself. And now we are headed towards the racetrack playa. And it's called that because the rocks, it gets wet and they slide around like a racetrack. This is the place where it gets that super thin layer of water and then the rocks slide around and leave tracks. And forever people were super confused if it was some kind of supernatural occurrence or what. But here's the track, this is what we're talking about. All the way up to the rock. What made it? Then there's Ian. Go on! Go oh, faster! <laughs> but you bet on the wrong horse. No, you don't see that every day. You don't see that every day either. That's an honest to God Irishman. So about six miles down the road from the racetrack is the infamous, or famous, I guess it's not bad, Tea Kettle Junction, where people leave powerful, positive messages on tea kettles basically littering in the national park. Um, but since they hang them up, it's okay. Also, I've already been here. I don't know if you guys knew. This isn't my first time. Um, yeah, I've already been here. That's me. That's actually a, 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 an artist rendition of my face. Who knew? Perfectly drawn. Looks exactly like me with smirk and everything. So just coming out of Tea Kettle Junction towards the crater. I forgot which crater. This is gorgeous. Look at all these wildflowers. Good morning, friends. It is the following day, and Ian ran out of gas actually on the way there, and fortunately, uh, Sal Jr. was carrying some gas, so he put it in Ian's tank so Ian could get the rest of the way to the gas station, and when we got there, they had no gas because they were pumping it, so we had to wait half an hour while they were refilling the tanks, which thankfully, at least they were doing that, and they weren't just out of gas, or we'd have been in trouble. I maybe had enough to make it back, but it was we had to go up 5,000 feet and back down, so... I was fourth gear pinned trying to do 60 miles an hour on that bike. So I don't think of what I had would have lasted. But anyway, 
uh, while we were waiting at the gas station, I was moving my bike around and it was hot and I was tired and sweaty and not paying attention. And I knocked my helmet off and it hit the ground and my chin mount came off my helmet. I also did not bring any alternate mounts either for my helmet or anything to go on the bike, crash bars, anywhere. So lesson learned. I won't do that again. But basically both of the mounts I brought to use on this trip are now non-functional because I can't put it back. I can't put a camera back on the windscreen. It'll fall off again. So today's our last day of riding and I'm not going to film helmet cam stuff. Obviously, uh, I will try to stop and just take some shots of places that we stop, get some interesting footage that way, but it's not going to be a full on ride day. So I apologize for that. The plan for today was... Uh, Mangle Pass and the Goler Flats and Goler Pass. I think there's a pass in the cabin where they arrested Charlie Manson. Uh, the guys have already have mentioned that they that we're not doing that, but they're also notorious liars. So my guess is we are still doing that. Uh, it's pretty windy today. The weather's a lot cooler, so I'll be wearing different gear. But I will try to bring you in at interesting spots today. But it's not going to be a ride video. Sadly, I'm sorry. Oh crap, Charles Manson! <laughs> oh, never mind. This is where we get our tattoos. Drink the Kool-Aid. Up there is the big uh... Kool-Aid bat. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. That's I think it's the wrong cult leader, but this is the infamous, and I'm actually using the term correctly this time. Barker Ranch, named because they used to raise dogs. No, that's a lie. This is where they arrested Charlie Manson. Uh, he was hiding out up here in Death Valley. Interesting road to get here, so not a bad place to hide out, but. Uh... I guess nobody escapes the FBI. What's crazy is they didn't even have the internet back then. How'd they find him? It's a family getaway. Well, they got away. <laughs> he definitely got away. So I just rode down this, which is a, uh, a level six four-wheel drive obstacle. I looked it up. You mailed it! Ooh, Rockstar. Power sliding. The show off. Anyway, that's the worst part of this whole road. Nope, that's it. This is Mango Pass. I feel like I was just mangled. The windscreen came off again. I think I destroyed those wellnuts. They're kind of useless now. But a giant loop pronghorn strap fixes everything, so glad I had them on the bike. And we're here at this cabin overlooking the Painted Butte, which you probably can't see very well on the camera, but it is amazingly gorgeous. Hey, what happens at the cabin stays at the cabin, fellas. Nice. See, places like this restore my faith in humanity because it's not <laughs> destroyed. And just like anyone can stay here and people contribute and leave stuff, but this only works like somewhere hard to get to because it's close by, some idiot will ruin it. Some sort of some sort of correlation between laziness and uh, and appreciating things. This rally is meant for these people. Yeah. You love a running event. You have no idea what he does for you. Yeah. 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 I just want to say. Thanks to Joel for putting this event together, and thanks to Daryl and Brian who didn't actually come, but they're the ones who, they're the reason I've heard about this event and decided to sign up for it because I just had to get out of the cold and the rain, and I've always wanted to ride Death Valley, so here we are. Thanks to Ian for showing me around. Thanks to uh, Sal and Sal Jr. and Dennis for letting me ride with them all weekend. <sighs> and thanks to everyone who came up and said hi and uh, chatted. It's cool to meet all of you, and it's always it always makes me feel like like uh, the mayor or whatever, when I walk around at events like this and people come up and say hi. So thank you for that. It's great to meet all of you and uh, just a great event. And I probably will be back next year and I would recommend maybe you check it out too. Got to pop over to the ADV Rider forums. It is a reasonable hour. I'm going to get some sleep because I got to get up early and drive 14 hours home. So for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Uh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you.